All right, so now this is where we left off. We're going to pick up on how to do some pred uh, predictions. Um, the first two are very easy. You just got to think to separate and all this kind of stuff. I'm going to give you rules on the side, and they're going to help. So you might want to write them down. They're not going to be in the presentation. They're going to be on the side of the board. So what we're going to do is try to predict some of these guys. And this will help out because you got to use some of Unit 4 stuff to actually do this. It's really straightforward. So whenever we do a reaction, uh, basically everything breaks into ions. Okay. So number one, whenever you see a reaction, you obviously know that this is a synthesis because you have an element plus an element. Okay. We wrote all those down on the side before y'all left on last week. Okay. Well, if you have element plus element, what's going to be your product then? No. What? Is it going to be an element, element, compound? What is it? Compound. It's going to be a compound. So which means you've got to take both of these elements and make them a compound, but you don't squish. Some people will do this. Don't worry like that. No squishy. Okay. Uh, but what you've got to do is this. In case you just need a step-by-step -step process, I'll give you a step-by-step -step process. Identify the reaction. That's number one. I'm going to say ID. All right, once you identified it, it's synthesis. All right, we know where we're going. All right, number two, when doing it, if you know, after you know it's a synthesis reaction, drop your subscripts and crisscross your charges. When is the only time you don't drop subscript? When it's a poly. So drop subscripts and then crisscross. So we got sodium, what's the charge of sodium? Plus one. And what's the charge of chlorine? Crisscross. What do you get? Once you have crisscrossed it, there you go. Now it's not balanced, but we're going to do balance. Well, I mean, y'all can balance later. I'm just right now, let's just predict the products. We'll go back and balance it. So that's it. One, two. One, two punch. That's why these are easy. Do the next two. So number two was calcium and oxygen. Shh. All right. So first thing, drop subscripts except for polys. Are there polys? No. no. By the way, you're not going to see a poly on the synthesis. But I have to, I'll go ahead and say start looking for that. Drop the subscripts and crisscross them. What's the, uh, so we drop all subscripts. There's none here for CA. Drop the two for the O2. All right. Now what's the charges? Negative two. Crisscross and reduce. What do you get? K-O. Cal. <laughs> Did someone say that? K-O. Um, yeah, there you go. How do you balance it? Did you balance it? You put a two on CA and a two on CAO. There you yeah. go. Those are, yeah, I didn't have to draw a little thing because I feel like, you know, y'all can eyeball this. Uh, this one, iron three plus O2. Well, uh, we already ID'd it. Drop the subscripts. Okay, charge of iron was plus three. Charge of oxygen, negative two. Crisscross. Fe. Two O three. It's easy. Don't start. <laughs> yeah, these are the easy ones. Uh, so to balance this, though, you notice we could go ahead and start doing the iron, but. Oh, by the way, ignore the charge whenever you balance. It's not going to matter. Um, you can go ahead and put a two here, but here's the problem. When you start balancing your oxygens, you got two and three, and there's only one thing they have in common. Two and three does. Six. six. Make them both equal six, then do your iron. Um, so what times two will give you six? Three. What times three will give you? Two. And so now how many irons do you have? Four. So what do you got here? Four. All right. Decomp. Let's have some fun with this. All right, now this is a little bit backwards. First things first. I'm going to show you like how the rules are the same, but they're also a little different. There's like an extra step here. Uh, when doing decomps, the main people have trouble with is forgetting diatomics. Uh, so for example, how to identify a decomp reaction? Well, if you just have a compound in your reactants before the arrow, you should be able to predict the products from there. This one's totally backwards from synthesis. So remember the last guy was two elements in the reactants. This one's just one compound. 
So this is a decomp, which means the products will always be, and I'm only going to do, I'm not going to do like leftovers where you have a compound and an element. That's just confusing people. We're just going to do basic decomp. Um, so your products are going to end up being an element plus an element. Okay. So what you do is this. You do ID the reaction. The difference here is you are dropping subscripts, okay, but you're not crisscrossing. You're going to ID it, same step, but number two, you're going to split them instead of drop, them. drop subscripts. Uh, now you are dropping subscripts, but instead of dropping crisscross, you're dropping and splitting. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So you're not combining, you're taking them apart. So you are going to drop subscripts, but instead, and this is where the other part comes in, um, you're then going to split them. I'll say them instead of um. And then you balance. Well, there's a third immediate step. But I didn't want to like overwhelm you. So let's go ahead and split them real quick, and I'll show you what the third step is. It's not balance. So you got lithium, and you got fluorine. One's so hard. There was no subscript there to yeah, drop. We'll have two. But that's where the third part comes in. It says, don't forget your diatomic molecules. This is the part where people miss on decomp. They forget to look <laughs> if they're diatomic. So number three is, if it's diatomic, and don't forget, they're over there, the hudnoff Calibri. Oh, yeah. Diatomics get a subscript of two. So, which one's a diatomic? If. Is Li a diatomic? No. no. And that's how you do it. Uh, fourth step is balance. Sorry. So, you got two elements. Separate them. Drop subscripts. B, E, plus O. If they're diatomic, give it a subscript two. Is this diatomic? No. Is that diatomic? Yes. And then balance. There you go. All right, this next one, though, is a little bit more. So first things first, drop the subscript and split them. Drop the two and three. They just, just get away with it. Just get rid of them. I can't see where I'm at. Cu plus O. And if they're diatomic, give them a two. Which one's diatomic? Then you go back and balance. By the way, that one's just total reverse from the previous third one we did, except I changed Cu with F. I meant Fe with Cu. Uh, so same thing applies, two and three, so you're going to need two here, four here, and three. Okay. There we go. So notice that one's completely backwards from the... All right, so single replacement. Uh, how things are going to work with single replacement is looking at an activity series chart. But anyway, uh, what you're going to look at is this, and how this works is basically like NCAA rankings. Um, basically, the higher ones are stronger than the lower ones. Just that simple. Uh, for example... Some reactions will not take place. We did talk about yeah, the other day, like, well, why does the woman go with the bigger guy? Um, because he's stronger. Okay, same thing here. Some elements are stronger than others. Yes, it has something to do with electronegativity, but not all the time. Basically, this is the ranking, and it's really weird. It's kind of totally backwards when you expect. You would think gold, platinum, silver, and copper to be the strongest of the metals. Turns out they're the weakest. Uh, basically what I'm saying is this, lithium is at the top of the list. They will replace any metal. So basically if one is higher than the other, they can replace it, but gold cannot kick out lithium. All right, so I want y'all to understand how to read the chart. We'll show you a reaction here in a second, but I just want you to get an idea how the, this chart works. Okay, so notice this, all metals have what charge? Positive or negative? Positive. So this chart's dedicated just to positives. But don't think, and those are the guys, they'll always duke it out. But don't forget, girls can actually duke it out too. There are four right here, and they're all halogens. This really does go with electronegativity. Obviously, fluorine is higher up than any of the other guys. They're exactly the same on your periodic table. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. If you look on your periodic table, they're also in the same rank. Fluorine's more reactive than chlorine. Chlorine's more reactive than bromine. Bromine's more reactive than iodine. 
Fluorine can beat up iodine, but iodine can't beat up fluorine. So does that make sense? Yeah. Lower <laughs> cannot replace higher, but higher can replace lower. Yeah. I'm going to write these actually off to the side here. Notice this note up here. This is different. This one's actually the one I'm giving you. You don't have a choice on single replacement. You have to use that chart. You can't eyeball it. You can't do what you did on synthesis and decomp. You don't, this one has a chart, and the next guy has a chart you got to look at. We're going to run through them, but we'll go in more depth on Thursday. Chart, no, I will give you the chart. I, in college, they make you memorize it. But I'm not going to let you do that. You already got, y'all memorized the polys. I'm not going to make you do this too. So, same thing like before. First off, number one, ID it. Okay, same difference. Um, second thing I would do, I mean, you can tell that it is a synthesis or single replacement because you have an element plus a compound. Yeah, I got that. Okay, synthesis is element plus element. Decomp is just a compound. When you have an element plus a compound, somebody's going to be fighting for somebody. But the first thing people forget is on this step. And this is the most important. Write your charges. The reason why I say that, you're not going to know who's going to duke it out unless you know who has what charge. The two charges that are alike are the ones fighting it out. So what I mean by that is this. What's the charge of lithium? Uh, plus one. Plus one. All right. What's the charge of oxygen? Minus two. Okay. What's the charge of this, uh, gold then if that's minus two? Plus two. Plus two. Two times one divided by one. Two. That's going to be on the test tomorrow. Plus two. So looking at this, it's not the number, it's if it's positive or negative. Okay? Do you have two positives or two negatives? Two positives. Two positives. So who's duking it out is lithium and gold. Do y'all see that now? Okay? So two positives. The two same like. Right, like charges. Yeah. Now they're not going to attract. They're going to repel. They're going to fight it out. So in the ring, we have lithium versus gold. It's not the number charge of who wins. Some people thought that. Nope. Look at your chart. Whoever's higher up on the chart is going to be the winner. Whoever's lower is the loser. Well, here's lithium, and here's gold. Who's the loser? Gold. Loser. Winner. All right? Which means whoever the winner is, is going to get the bond. They get the girl. Okay? Gold gets kicked out. Lithium comes in, pop, 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 kicks gold out of the way, and he gets the bond with gold. I mean, gets the bond with oxygen. So, what does this mean is this. If it is getting kicked out, gold goes by itself. Same rules still apply from the previous guy. If they are diatomic, they get a two, yada, 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 things like that. So, basically, Number three, after you write the charges down, consult your chart, okay? But if a reaction does take place, go ahead and uh, make the new compound. You do the same thing like before. Drop subscripts, and if they're diatomic, get two. Now, when is the only time you write a two for a diatomic? For example, well, I give this oxygen a two. It'll, it has to be by itself. That's exactly right. Some people go ahead and give it a two over here, and I'm like, no, if it's getting a bond, it's not going to do that. Um, so, if oxygen, if who got kicked out? Who's by themselves now? Gold. Gold. So we write gold by himself. Is he diatomic? No. He's done. Yeah. Okay. So we got a new compound being formed. Do we just squish him? Uh huh. No. Crisscross. Oh, by the way, another reason why I say write the charges above their heads, you can quickly reference to the crisscross. So, Li is plus one. Oxygen is negative two. Crisscross, what do you get? All right, you got platinum. They went in and gave you a charge. Okay. Then you have potassium. What's his charge? Plus three. Oh, never mind. Okay, wrong thing. One. Uh, this one's <laughs> negative two. All right, so who's duking it out? Platinum and potassium, right? Yeah. Well, let's find them. Here's potassium. Here's platinum. <coughs> Who's higher? Potassium. 
This is the winner. That is the loser. Okay? Oh, well, look at this. Who already has the bond? Uh, is potassium the winner? Yes. So guess what the products are going to be? The same. As the same. In other words, instead of you rewriting the same thing over here twice, no reaction. And you'll see me do RxN, short for reaction. We're lazy. So, in other words, when you go down, you identify it, you write the charge above the head, you consult your chart. At this step, if the winner has already got the bond, there's no reaction. You don't have to go any further. You're done. All right, step one, write charges. Okay, what's the charge of fluorine? Uh, looking at minus one. Minus one. What's the charge of potassium? Plus one. What's the charge of bromine? Uh, minus one. Negative one. Okay, who's duking it out? Uh, Ooh, did y'all see that? Yeah. Wait a minute. The chicks are fighting it out. So yeah, the chicks can't fight it out. Uh, so do realize this. Potassium is actually being fought over, not the, uh, the negatives. Yeah, the very last one's a girl's up. So let me scoot this up. There's your girls down here. Because they hallowed you. <laughs> um, so this one's a little bit easier to look at. Um, I will tell you, though, people miss this one. Like, they forget the negatives and duke it out. And they missed that on the, the Unit 5 test. And I was like, these two guys are duking it out, so let's see who's more reactive. Fluorine. Who's higher? Fluorine. If fluorine does not have the bond, they're going to get the bond. She's going to get what she wants. Uh, so you do ID, ID the reaction. You write the charge above their heads. You consult the chart, which we just did. Who's higher? Okay, then we go do the next thing. Drop subscripts, do the whole new reaction crisscross, and if they're diatomic, they get a two. So we drop all subscripts. Who's getting kicked out? Is it potassium or bromine? Bromine. Bromine. So does everybody see? Because he is the loser. Girl. Okay. The girl. She. Why can bromine and fluorine not bond? Because they're both girls. Oh, God. <laughs> Basically, yeah, they're both negatives. So bromine's kicked out. I always write the guy who's kicked out first, just because I get him out of the way. So bromine is here. Is he diatomic? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you don't have to. You can have him second. I like to write the, the single guy who got kicked out first. Get him out of the way. So who's left over is potassium and fluorine. Drop subscription crisscross. Yeah. This is what's weird is because some people are going to write your F first. <laughs> Who goes first? Oh, the transition metals. Yeah, there we go. So crisscross, you get kf. All right, and then you balance, which is not hard. Uh, two here, two here. So again. Break down everything you got. I probably should put in here. You're pretty much doing a combination of synthesis and decomp when you go right here. You're basically dropping subscripts. If they're diatomic, get a two. Crisscross charges is needed to bond. All right. So here's some notes to take down before we move out of this. So double replacements are a little screwed up. In fact, they are the most complicated because there's a lot of things you got to do. But they do break down the step-by-step -step process here. Basically, you're going to have two ionic compounds, which is great because yeah, it's all crisscrossing. But when two ionic compounds are dissolved in water, they're called ionic solutions or aqueous. You might want to write the word aqueous. Uh, remember that ionic compounds break into ions when dissolved in water. That's why I said also no, it's ionic. Double replacement reactions are sometimes called precipitation reactions. When you hear the word precipitation, you think of rain. rain. Well, that's water falling out of the air. All right. Well, in precipitation reactions, same things happen except water's not falling out. A solid is. So imagine it raining solid. That'd be kind of bad. <laughs> You'd probably be around a volcano if that was true. Uh, so a precipitate is the solid. So I'm going to jump back real fast, and I'm going to come back to this. Alright. So right here. No, go back. No, no, go back. Alright, there we go. 
All right, so out of this reaction, I'll go ahead and tell you right now, your precipitate will never be over here. A precipitate is the solid, okay, not the AQ. Does that make sense? So who are you looking for whenever you're looking over here to find the precipitate? PBI. Yeah, PBI. But what's the, what tells you that that's your precipitate is that little S down there. It's solid. That's it. So if I say the word precipitate, I'm talking about the solid. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, make that connection. How many? 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 How is basically that solid. So precipitates get an S. Sometimes you like precipitate, sometimes you won't. All right, so scooting it down a little bit, a double replacement reaction only occurs if one of the products is insoluble. Okay, I want y'all to make this connection right now. Okay. I told y'all precipitate was a solid. Guess what else we call the precipitate? Insoluble. So if you want to write these down, these are all synonyms. The solid is the precipitate, is the insoluble product. Insoluble, precipitate, solid. They're all the same thing. So if I say any of those three, I'm all talking about one thing. Insoluble means does not dissolve. Guess what soluble means? Solve. Now, let me put you with another word. Do you see soluble? That means does or does not dissolve? Does. Okay, does dissolve. What symbol is it going to get? Yeah, uh, AQ. AQ. So don't confuse the word soluble with S. Okay? Insoluble is an S, which is a precipitate. Soluble is AQ. If, as soon as you get that down, you'll knock this chart out like nothing. Insoluble product is a precipitate because it falls out of solution, aka precipitate, falls. Uh, makes a cloudy, okay? Eventually, as like for example, when y'all saw the guy drop the stuff and it went yellow, there was a yellow solid formed. Now, if we just left it alone for about an hour and came back, it would settle at the bottom just like in a snow globe until you shook it up again. If you see a cloudy solution, that means a precipitate was formed. Okay, so you mix two clear things together and it goes cloudy. Something formed a precipitate. Some solid was created. Uh, you didn't create it. You just had two ions come together and they just, they liked each other so much they just don't want to be dissolved. Um, they're very, very troublesome. Anyway, use the solubility rules, which is the other chart I'm going to give you, uh, to determine whether or not the ionic products are soluble or insoluble. That, in other words, what I mean is soluble means AQ, insoluble means S. In other words, if it's soluble, it gets an AQ. If it's insoluble, it gets an S. It's better if I just show you. So this is the chart. Um, I'm going to clean this up. It, as you can see, this is exactly what I would show you on here, but I'm just going to show you right here. I'm going to jump forwards and backwards between this, but I want you all to see how to read this real fast. Um, okay, and I'm going to clean it up much better, but basically let's just go over how to read it real fast so you get an idea of so when you come back it's a little bit easier. Um, we're not going to go over the examples today because we're just going to stop on the chart. It's just easier. All right, so what this means is this. Let's break down the coded words that we see. Soluble ionic compounds. Does that mean it gets an AQ or an S? AQ. So in other words, they're saying anything bonded with these guys are AQ. So in other words, if I said NaCl, notice they're saying all the negatives. If I say NaNO3, if I say NaBr, I'm just using sodium all around. I can use any other metal. But all these guys we get AQ with me so far. All right. So, if I say there's an exception to the rule, okay, if it's not going to be soluble, then what's it going to be? Insoluble, which gets a? An S. So I'm going to put an S over here to quickly show you. Now, these are the exceptions. They're saying anything that bonds with these guys is going to get AQ, unless it bonds with one of these guys. So in other words, I said a second ago, NaCl, y'all know salt dissolves in water, right? Okay. Um, but if I said AgCl, this one would get an AQ. That one, what's it going to get? An S. 
Why? Because that's an exception. If I said HG2Cl, if I said PBCl, or PBCl2, they all would get an S. So how to read the chart, and I'm going to recopy this so it's not so blurry, um, is that basically if they're bonded to this, you just think, okay, well they're all aqueous unless they meet one of the, unless they're bonded to one of these guys. So you got to look for the second guy. Notice they repeat. Silver, mercury, lead, silver, mercury, lead, silver, mercury, lead. Except for when you get down to here to SO4, the sulfate. If I said Na to SO4, is that going to be aqueous or S? Well, let's find out. It is going to be aqueous unless it is a SR, BA, HD, or PP. Is this an SR, BA, HD, or PP? No. no. So guess what it gets? Acu. However, if I said BA, SO4, okay, well, here's SO4. It's aqueous unless it is bound to a SR, BA, HD, or PB. What is that? Is that one of those exceptions? It's going to be a solid. And that's how you read the chart. That's not hard. No. People forget how to read it. No. Mm. However, just like over here, there are exceptions. Now you know why I didn't do NA first. We have some solids. You're right. Why is it solid? Okay. OH, it is solid. Okay, unless it is bonded to an alkali metal. Uh, ammonium, C A S R or B A. Is that a any of those three we just mentioned? Nope. Solid. However, if I do sodium hydroxide, what's that going to be? Uh, it is aqueous. It is an OH. Normally it's solid, but it is bonded with the alkali metal. So that dissolves in water. And that's basically how to rechart. So to do these predictions. It's a very similar rule, and I'll try to make some room over here. Um, so first things first, you've got to identify the type of reaction always. Now, here's the thing. You are kind of repeating the same stuff from single. Write the charge above their heads, which shouldn't be hard, because they're going to be in order of positive, negative, positive, negative. I'll go ahead and show you. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. The positives always have to go first. Negatives go second. So go ahead and write charges. That'll help. Um, after you write the charges, so let's write charge. What's charge of calcium? Plus two. Plus two. Charge of chlorine? Plus, no, negative two, one. Negative one. Yeah. Charge of silver is always? Plus two. Plus one. Plus one. Zinc's plus two. Uh, sulfate? Minus two. Okay. By looking at this, now then, again, this is what I do. Instead of trying to look to see who's going to challenge who, you're not seeing any challenges here. We're going to try to assume they're going to do a Y swap. Okay? All right. Here we go. All right. Yeah, there is. It's pretty sad. Um, so what I like to do is take the negatives. I usually leave my positives still because I, just some reason it kind of works out better in your brain. But if you want to swap the positives, it's fine. I, you know, you'll still get the same answer. But I always like to compare my negatives. So when I look at these two guys, I'm saying, I'm swapping the SO4 to where the CL was, CL, go back over here. That will work every time. Again, let me repeat myself. Find your negatives, and you're going to try to swap them. Now, you're not going to do it yet, okay, because here's the problem. You need to be able to see if this reaction is going to occur. Okay, so we did the demo, or you saw the demo where the guy dropped two clear liquids and a, pink, a yellow stuff came out. Well, here's the thing. What if nothing came out? It was clear with clear, and then it ended being clear. What a re did a reaction take place? No. Nothing happened. So what we're going to do is actually try swapping these two to see if a precipitate will fall out. That's why you need your solubility chart. I'll go ahead and tell you, don't worry about leaving AQs on the left side, because here's the thing. They're always AQ on the left. Yes, they're always AQ on the left. Okay. <laughs> We care about what's on the right, okay? You got to have an insoluble product on the right for a reaction to occur. So one of those guys has to end up being an S. If it doesn't end up being an S, then don't do anything. You can do it, but there's just gonna be no reaction. All right, so let's take a look. Now again, let's, let's go over this part before somebody asks, okay? I hope you're keeping up with the 
the silly questions. No. I, I told ST to keep up with silly questions. Um, so, why can't calcium bond with silver? Because it just can't. It just don't They're have both, it. Because they're opposites don't attract. Both opposite. <laughs> opposites do attract, they're but, they're, but they're not opposite. I see. You said what I was thinking, but backwards. Okay. Um, so, chlorine can't bond with sodium sulfate because they have negative, negative, positive, positive. The only way you can rearrange these, the only way physically possible, is to just swap your negatives. Yeah. Or, or swap your positives, but I'm going to do it negatives. All right, so if calcium is not going to be with chlorine, then who's it going to be with over here? Sulfate. All right, so we need to see if calcium and sulfate are going to make a compound. And then who's the other guy? If silver's not going to be with sulfate, who's it going to be? Chlorine. chlorine. And I go ahead and just have their charge above their heads because whenever you, you're going to see if you're going to crisscross. Now, before you even begin on that, let's go ahead and say these are my new matchups. Let's find out if they're going to be S or AQ before we even bother wasting our time. That's really it. Look on your chart. All right. Find SO4. Don't look at me. Look at your chart. Okay. So SO4 is on the upper side, right? Uh, he's on the upper or the bottom? Well, he's on the bottom part of the upper yeah. part. Yeah. So he's at the very bottom. He is going to be AQ unless he bonds with the what? SR, BA, HG, or PB. Is that any of those? No. So this sulfate is going to be AQ. He's not our precipitate. It's aqueous. Okay. It's aqueous. Um, however, let's take a look at this. Find chlorine. He's also in the soluble side. Okay. He's going to be soluble or AQ unless he bonds with which of the three? Oh, right off the bat. Is that an AG? Yeah. So guess what he's going to end up being? Solid. So if you don't get a solid, there's no reaction. That's it. If you get two AQs, you can't do anything. It's going to be clear and clear. You mix two clears and you got just clear. Clear. Um, <laughs> now, here's the. Now, because this guy is formed, that means the reaction did take place. It fell out of solution. All the everything else you can't really see. So, what do we do? Well, all you gotta do is just crisscross now. What's this crisscross here? AGCL. Now, you can put this one first, it don't matter. But uh, just be sure you match up your new gals and guys together. Okay, and uh, calcium sulfate, you crisscross those, it's two and two, which reduces to CA. But because of this guy, the reaction takes place. If they were both AQ, you write no reaction. Now, this is balanced. Well. Yeah. Yeah. All right, here's what you got to do. There you go. <laughs> Believe it or not, double replacements look intimidating to balance, but they are actually the easiest. You usually have to write down one coefficient, and you're done. Notice there was two AGs, two CLs, two AGs, two CLs. Everything else was one. Number two. Let's take a look at this one. All right, put your charge above the head. What's the charge of lithium? Plus one. What's the charge of a hydroxide? Negative one. Ooh, polys. Um, do polys drop their subscripts? No. What's the charge of magnesium? Plus two. What's the charge of nitrate? Shh. Minus two. Minus two. What? <laughs> there is two of them, but minus one. Uh, two one. All right, so who's going to be uh, swapping here? So let's see how they do. Let me rewrite them. Yes, this is a long, drawn-out process, but that's how it rolls. So lithium is not going to bond with hydroxide. They're going to bond with... Nitrate. I don't, but you can. If you want to do it backwards and do just swap your positives, you can do that. If that works better. It's really how, your preference. I'm just used to playing with the polys, so that's why I usually do it that way. All right, then magnesium is going to be not with nitrate, not with lithium, but with hydroxide. <coughs> All right, now consult your chart. Here's some good news. I'll go ahead and tell you. If you see a nitrate, aqueous. Look, is there any exceptions to nitrate? He's the first one on your list. No. No. 
So that's the good news. If you see AQ, I mean, if you see nitrate, you don't really need to even look him up. He's always, we always use him to dissolve stuff. Uh, however, let's take a look at their MgOH. Find OH, he's at the bottom. He is going to be solid unless he is bonded with a few exceptions. Is Mg of any of those exceptions? No. 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 So he's a? No. There's your precipitate. Oh, by the way, again, it does not matter which one of these two you write first. Like if I wrote Ca uh, SO4 here, AgCl here, wouldn't matter. You're already with? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and just mix match them. Plus one, negative one. You just squeeze them together. Is it balanced? Let me re redo this. No, it's not balanced. How do you balance it? Add a two where? Uh-huh. And? Boom. And you're done. All right, last one. Let's check the last one one more time. Shh. Because y'all are going to be doing lots of these, by the way. I put a two here. Because, shh, there are two OHs here, and so I needed two OHs here. Um, and now I have two lithium, so I had to go back over here to this lithium that was one, and now I put a two here. That also made two nitrates. I already had two nitrates, so it balances out. And magnesium was one and one. <coughs> so other than doing that little crisscross thing, that might help. Um, so look at this one. First things first, right charges, plus one, negative one, plus two, negative two, yada, yada, yada. Who's swooping, swapping? All right, so let's take a look at these. Is this reaction going to occur? Well, first off, you should know that NaCl does dissolve in water. That's salt. Does salt dissolve in water? Yeah. Okay, that's common sense. You can look on chart, and it'll back it up. Now look at calcium hydroxide. Look at your hydroxide. He is going to be solid unless he bonds with an exception. Is he one of the exceptions? Yes. Yeah. So is he going to get S or AQ? Solid. Nope. Oh, AQ. Remember, he's at the bottom one, which is insoluble unless it bonds with the exception. Yeah. It is bonding with one of the exceptions. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. You don't see it. You need to see it now. He is one of the exceptions. So we got two AQs. No reaction. There are a few exceptions here. For example, okay, a double replacement reaction can sometimes yield three products. Uh, and I have to go over this because you're going to actually see some of this uh, later. I'm showing you this now because in college they don't show you how to test for carbonate. Uh, in a lab, you would do multiple samples and you would have to actually test to see if the, a certain compound or certain powders have certain compounds in them. Now, one of the things is we talked about the precipitate. Okay, that's done. That's what we just did. However, you can get something that has bubbles. Okay, have you done the vinegar and baking soda before? Oh, yeah. It bubbles. Oh. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Put the vinegar in, it bubbles. Volcano. The volcano thing. That's what that little weird looking picture is, except that added food coloring. Um, to test for carbonates, you add acids. Any acid. Vinegar is an acid. Hydrochloric acid is an acid. Things like that. I'm using hydrochloric here because it actually makes something very interesting. You're going to actually do this reaction in the next unit. So what I just told you was this. You can take baking soda, mix it with hydrochloric acid. One of your products is table salt. You technically could. Technically, you could. No, you're not going to eat it. Uh, so what I'm saying is, I don't know if you realize this, you can convert certain compounds into other compounds, more modern day compounds. And when you did the vinegar, if you do vinegar and baking soda, you're doing this reaction. You're just not getting salt in the process. Look over here at your products. Do you see a solid? No. No. But did a reaction take place? Yeah. How do you know? Well, H2O is one, but can you see that? What do you really see when you mix those two things together that actually pops up? Okay, yeah, you see it in the formula. I'm talking about in real life. If I mix vinegar and baking soda, how do you know something's no, reacting? Bubbles. 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 What is the bubbles? Gas. Yeah. What's the only gas? So, not only does a solid have to form, but if you get a bubble or uh, one of the products water, a reaction did occur. Just sometimes you can't see it like a color change. Sometimes it just bubbles. 
If you put, uh, if you clean your car battery, you put baking soda on it, you drop water on it, the baking soda is reacting with the acid that is on the battery. I don't know if you ever clean your yeah. cables, but I, that's what I'd do. Don't use Coke. Some people say use Coke. Yes, it'll work, but also make your battery sticky and start corroding other things. Predict these. You don't need my help. Wait, where do we start? Which one of these four do we do? Oh, which one of the four rules? I didn't give you any rules for combustion yet, but you should know the products. How do we know it's combustion? What are the products of a combustion reaction always going to be? Carbon monoxide. Not carbon monoxide. There is no schematic. There's no hydrogen. There's no element plus element. There's no compound. There's no element plus compound. There's no compound plus compound on, on combustion. You have to look at it and tell it's combustion. And there's only one way you can do that. And this schematic right here. I will tell you, it does look like a single replacement reaction because that's a compound and that's an element. But I'm going to warn you, if you see element plus compound, double check to make sure that's not a hydrocarbon. What's a hydrocarbon? Anything that has carbon and hydrogen. Uh, however, here's the problem. <coughs> With these guys, uh, the balancing is the butt. Um, when you have these, you'll notice something about your oxygens. They're split. Remember, I told you a trick, and you might want to write this trick down. This is your last chance to get it down because I'm not telling you this again. When you have split oxygens, you balance what first? Your C and your H. Get these guys out of your way. Balance your O2 last. Always. Okay? Always. All right? Um, because if you try to balance your O's first, you're going to be pulling out your hair. And I promise you, you'll go bald in 30 minutes. All right, so let's balance this out. I'm actually going to do the RP because, um, and how, the reason why I say do the RP, it spells CHO, and that's how you can always tell it's a combustion reaction, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, CHO. All right, so look at the first one. You really don't need to do this chart, but I'm going to do it anyway, just to appease. So again, we don't like odd numbers, and where do you see an odd number at? Product of oxygen. Yeah, but they're split. You could double this, but you'll still it'll end up with the odd number. You can double this, and you'll get rid of your even. Normally, that's why I say balance out your carbons and hydrogens first, because then you can double your oxygens last. You got four hydrogens over here, two over here. What do you need to put here to fix that? Two. Two here. Well, that changes this to a four. So we got one oxygen here times two. That's two. Two oxygens here. Two. That's four. All right. So let's take a look at this one. RP, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. We got three carbons, ten hydrogens, two here, one, two, three. Um, okay, so first things first, balance out your carbon and hydrogens. Get them out of the way. You got three carbons on the left. What do you need over here? Three. All right. I'll total up my oxygens last. Let's just skip that part, get right to the end. Uh, you got ten ox hydrogens on the left. How many do you need on the right? Uh, yeah. Now let's add them up. Five times one, five. Three times two, add them together, crapola. When you end up with a odd number here, you got to do a little trick because nothing times two will give you 11 except 5.5, .5. but you can't put a decimal. But how do we get rid of odd numbers? What can you multiply it by to get rid of an odd number? And make it even. Multiply it by? 11. No. 2. two. <laughs> oh, that's right. I don't know why. Um, so again, the next part of this little trick, and I told you all this. Whatever the little number is here, it's going to end up being your coefficient right here. So again, quick trick if you want to just knock it out without actually thinking. Uh, double every other coefficient and put whatever number here was here. It'll balance it out. That works every time. It's just a little formula. If you don't believe me, I'll do it long way here. So, what was the coefficient here? 
No, coefficient. Um, Nothing, which is usually a yeah. one. double one. Okay, skip it. What's this coefficient? Five. Double it. Three. What's this coefficient? <laughs> Three. Three. Double it. Nah. Okay. <laughs> it's balanced now. Nah. How do you know how to put 11? I mean, you can work it out and redo all this. Let's say I didn't put the 11 there. All right. Recount up everything. 2 times 3 is 6. Uh, 2 times 10 is 20. Skip the 2. Go back over here to the right. You basically doubled everything here because you just t times everything by 2. Add up your oxygens now. 10 times, let me erase this. 10 times 1 is 6 times 2 is add them together. What do you get? What times 2 will give you 22? It's a little trick. R, P, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, 10, 22, Two, one, two, three. All right, balance out your carbons and hydrogens. You got 10 on the left. How many you got to have on the right? 10. 10, put the 10 here. Um, so that changes to a 10. Okay, what times 2 will give you 22? That is gross. All right, same, same. Let's add up our new oxygens here. 11. 10 times 2 is 20. 20 plus 11. Is that an odd number? <coughs> yeah. Uh, I will tell you, 31 will end up here. This will be a 2. That will be a 22. That will be a 20. 31 on the O2? You can do it the long way. Double all coefficients beforehand. Well, if you double this, it's that. Double your 11. That will be 22. Double your 10. That's a 20. So this is a summary of everything I just talked about of how to predict or how to recognize the reaction. I'm about to give you a sheet now where you're going to have to use this. So if you see an element plus element, synthesis reaction, which means they're going to combine together. If you see just a compound and just a compound, one compound in your reactants, it's decomp. You've got to split them apart. Element plus compound, single replacement. What chart are you going to use with the single replacement? This one. The top one or the bottom one? Top one. Top one. That's called the activity series chart. Yeah. Okay, use that for single replacement. For double replacement, you're going to use the other chart right below it, which is solubility. Okay, and for combustion, you need to know that's a wild card. He is not similar or opposite of any of these other guys. You just got to recognize a hydrocarbon, which is a fuel source. You can have an alcohol, which is CH and O, but typically I try not to give you those. All right, so to identify the following, in case you haven't guessed yet, you're going to actually have to write these guys out. Okay, you can, you can look at it if you're good enough and look for key words, but let's actually write them out so you get an idea. So using your little schematics from earlier, knowing element plus element and all that kind of stuff, you can figure these out. Identify the following type of reaction. Magnesium chloride, which is Mg, and that has a plus 2 charge. I'm sorry, that's a little cluttered. Uh, Cl has what charge? Crisscross, you end up with MgCl2. All right. However, it says breaks down. I went ahead and drawing a plus sign because I have it. Forget about that. All right, let me rewrite that. That means decomposition. So right off the bat, there's only one that it can be. You can stop right there if you want. But if you wanted to keep going, it says breaks down into magnesium and chlorine gas. What is that? Decom. When you have a compound and it breaks down into an element plus element. I know, horrible accent. All right, moving on. Number two. Shh. This is a good one. I like this reaction. I don't know why. Uh, zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid. So, zinc, is it diatomic? No. No. Is it in a compound right here? No. No. Reacts with hydrochloric acid. They were so nice. They gave you the formula, so you didn't have to actually do any crisscrossing. Right off the bat, you should be able to tell if that's what type of reaction. Single replacement. Element 
plus compound. So your formula is going to end up, they went and told you what the products are, zinc chloride, in which if you just wrote this, guys, that's incorrect. Why is that incorrect? Oh, you got it crisscross. Mm, Papa Mau Mau. All right. Mau Mau. All right. Um, hydrogen. <laughs> and why is it H2? Because it's not atomic. So, luckily, I mean, this is compound and then it gives you element. But that is what type of reaction? Well, you could have stopped right here and be able to tell everything, but I wanted to work the whole thing out here. That is single. Mm. So you're using everything you've been doing before. So next type of reaction, you got potassium. Is it diatomic? No. No. Reacts with chlorine gas. Is it diatomic? Two per yield, two produce, whatever. Potassium chloride. Well, you got to crisscross these. Plus one, negative one. Yeah, let's just get to it. So you could have stopped right here. You notice this is an element plus element, which yielded a compound. Synthesis. All right, so this one I could go and tell you is a double. Want to know why? Look how long the whole description is. Potassium carbonate reacts with barium chloride to produce barium carbonate and potassium chloride. Big, 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 big. Double replacements are huge, but they're not really too bad to identify. Let's work it out anyway. Potassium carbonate, plus one, CO3, negative two, crisscross applesauce. Reacts with barium chloride, barium, plus two, chlorine, negative one. That should be instinct by now. Y'all should be able to be able to actually pull up like nothing. Crisscross, you end up barium, Cl2. Right off the bat, you can tell that is a double because it's compound plus compound. But for craps and giggles, let's work out the rest. Barium carbonate. So barium and carbonate is coming together. You crisscross those, you're going to end up with BaCO3 or bacon. Um, it does spell bacon. Potassium chloride, K, I'm sorry, this is plus one. Negative one, crisscross, KCO. No, these are not balanced, but uh, again, they didn't say balance. Uh, number five, last one. Only thing that is left is combustion. But why? Well, let's take a look. Tricarbon, how many carbons? Octahydride, how many H's? Plus oxygen gas, which is O2. Well, that right off the bat, that is a fuel plus O2. So what is the products always going to be of that? Yep. I'll do it right uh, as soon as I can. Um, yeah, it was a sick. It was last Friday. All right. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, one thing I forgot to do yesterday. You had one job today, Hawkum. All right. So, hey, carbon dioxide, water, CO2, and water. But you could have predicted that without my help. By the way, you notice I put down the schematic right below each one. Uh, yeah, there you go. So you already know it's combustion. And by the way, we balanced this one in the notes. At least I think we did. Let me double check. Three here, four here, eight. No, this one wasn't a nut. But three times two is six. Well, then that'd be 10, that'd be five. That's how you would balance it. All right. That's propane. 